はいはいはいはいこれじゃあこれじゃwelcome to the creative obsession podcast uh, this is a podcast about quilting and knitting and craftiness and creativity my name is Carrie and I come to you from just outside of Portland Oregon where today it's a little dreary for more reasons than one the weather is a little gray today yesterday was stellar um, but today's a little gray so uh, I woke up this morning to see the results of our election here in the United States and uh, Instead of feeling sad and wallowing in despair, I thought, you know what, we need some positivity and we need to be focusing on some good things. So I decided to go ahead and record today. I had already planned on it anyway. And so, um, so let's just get on with it. Thank you so much for joining me. Uh, if you are new to the channel, which I've had a lot of uh, new subscribers, this is a podcast about just being creative and sharing me sharing with you what I have worked on in the past or what I'm currently working on. So um, I want to welcome everybody and thank you. There's a lot of podcasts out there and I really appreciate that you take a little bit of time out of your day to sit with me and watch mine. Um, it was a little bit longer this time since I last recorded because last week, um, towards the end of the week, I went away on a quilt retreat with my buddies. So um, I didn't have time to get done what I needed to get done and and go on the retreat and record and all of that because um, on the days that I record it's a good pretty good portion of my day by the time I record this and then edit it, um, it I'm well into the afternoon before I start uploading and then that takes a couple hours which I don't have to do anything for I just have to sit there and wait for it to upload but it's a good portion of my day so I didn't have time last week. So it's been almost three weeks. Um, one thing that's good about that is I have more finished objects than I usually do. So that feels better um, to have something like that to share with you. Um, I, I took some pictures and videos of things that I have been doing um, in the last few weeks. I don't know if I'll put them in the beginning or at the end. So if you didn't see anything at the beginning, there'll be some footage at the end of um, a hike that we did and just some fun things. We, um, I post on Instagram. So you probably, if you follow me there, you'll have a, an idea of what I've been up to. Jim and I took a hike a couple weeks back now, um, just outside of Portland's Mount Hood, which is a big mountain. And, um, every year for the last several years, we've been going up to Salmon, uh, Salmon River creek it's a river the salmon river just on the foothills of the mountain and in the fall the salmon run swim upstream to go lay their eggs and we usually can see that happening and it is just so cool it's a beautiful hike it's super easy it's really level um, it's more just like a walk in the woods but what's fun is to watch the salmon go up river and do their salmon thing 
Uh, this last October was very rainy here in our area. And so we didn't get out to do that um, when we normally would have, excuse me. <clears throat> and um, so we were a little late in the season and because we've had so much rain, the salmon ran a little bit earlier. And so unfortunately we didn't see any. The river was really pretty full. Um, so it would have been hard to see them anyway. And we only saw one dead one on the shore. So it's already, it, it had already passed, but it was a glorious day up there. It was just gorgeous. And uh, we just had a lot of fun. It felt really good just to get out and walk in the woods because that always feels really good. <laughs> so some of the footage is from that. And, and um, <clears throat> so anyway, like I said, I don't know where it's going to fit on this video, but that's what that is. Um, I had a really fun time at my quilt retreat. I haven't been to one. We haven't done it in quite a long time. And um, so I'm going to go right into my So Now What segment because uh, that's what's on the wall behind me, which may look a little bit strange. And the reason why it looks a little bit strange is because it's not finished. Um, this is a project I started quite a while ago probably a year ago or so. And it's something that I just work on little bits at a time. I hadn't given it any attention in quite a long time because it's kind of an intense process. Um, that is about, oh gosh, not probably halfway done. As you can see, there's two sections that haven't been done. Those are, are pretty intense, but I am going to show you, I'll show you a picture of what it's going to look like because it's really pretty cool. So that's what the finished quilt will look like. Um, it's a big lion, a big lion head. Um, so what I've got done now is like the bottom jaw part of the lion and then like the forehead. So now I need to make this section on both sides. So the pieces get smaller. Um, like I said, it's, it's, uh, it's time consuming because it's paper pieced. And for those of you do that don't know what paper piecing is, and it's a, it's a technique of making quilts and what you have, this is just one of the pieces that I have. Um, you print on a piece of paper. I had to have this printed at an office supply store because the, the pattern pieces were on um, like legal size paper and my copier doesn't do that. So this is just printed on copy paper. I generally, when I paper piece, I like to copy onto um, like uh, newsprint type paper because in the end you have to tear this off and the newsprint tears easier. But what you do is you actually sew to the paper. So here's a section. This is a section here that will fit somewhere on there. But as you can see, it's stitched. It's stitched right on the paper. And then when the whole thing's done, you rip all this paper off the back. So that's um, kind of tedious. But you have to do it this way. You have to use this technique when you're doing something with these weird ankles and stuff because it's nearly impossible to get your pieces to... Um, be as accurate when you have odd shapes and you would be using templates and your accu accuracy just isn't there. So, um, so you do paper piecing. You piece on paper and tear the pa paper off when it's done. So, um, like I said, I got, I'd say it's like half done because the sections that I need to do, these sections here, the pieces are lots, it, it, there's a lot of pieces in a small amount of space. So there's still a lot of pieces that just the pieces are smaller. So I had put it up on the wall because I wanted to see really how far I had gotten because when you're working on it, you know, and you're seeing this and you think how, what, where am I even at on this thing? <laughs> so, um, there's a whole, like she's, gosh, she's got it really well described in here. Tells you how to get your sections put together. Um, I have, cause it's color coded. So I took p swatches of my fabric and stuck on here to follow the key. So, you know, when it's, you know, this design on the paper that coincides with whatever color on your, on your fabric. Um, so it's, it's intense. You're following a map basically. And, um, 
it's going to look really cool when it's done. I think the finished quilt, I think it's like a 60 inch square. Six, yeah. And oh, and the patterns by Violet Craft. So when I had first seen this, when it first came out, I, I just knew I had to make it. And I don't know why that happens. There's just some quilts and even the same thing with knitting. Like you just, I have to make that. And so, so I am. So I put it up on my design wall and I thought, okay, I'm going to at least put it out there because it'll help me make it. It'll help me get working on it and finish it. Um, you know, it's not just sitting down to your sewing machine and just whipping out a few seams. It's, you know, I got my light table out and it's just a process. So when we, I went on this quilt retreat, I thought, what a great way to just be focused on that and, um, and make myself sit through it and make it. And I really got into a good rhythm. Um, there was, I had enough space because I need to have the light table and an iron right next to me and I have to kind of surround myself with everything I need to work on it. And um, I just basically worked on that. I had a couple other projects that I worked on, but that was my main focus was working on that. So that is several days worth of work. Um, I got that whole top section done there. And I think another section down here that I was needing to do. So I feel like I'm on the home stretch. I'm excited now that I got it up on the wall and saw that um, I'm further along than I thought I was. So I'm going to try and concentrate on getting more of that done. I may not get to it until January. It depends. I usually like to try and make Christmas gifts. And so I'm not going to have as much time to work on this if I'm working on Christmas gifts. But I don't know what I'm making for Christmas gifts. I did open a thread in our Ravelry group for any ideas that you may have. If you've got any ideas for some quick gifts that you can make. I like to make handmade gifts if I can. Um, just a little something that we give to the family members. And um, so, yeah. So if you have any ideas... Um, Gail had a really good idea, and I might show that pattern in a minute, but it, it um, you knitted like coffee, co coffee cup cozies, and they were so cute, and I got, I cast on, I'm like, oh, this is going to be great, I'm going to, I'm going to see how long these take, I think I can whip these out, and Jim got home, and I said, hey, what do you think of this, and he just sort of went, yeah, those are cute, I don't know, <laughs> am I totally on the wrong track? He says, I don't, you know, mom doesn't drink coffee and so-and-so doesn't ever go out and get coffee. And I thought, nobody's going to want to use these. I think I'm going to make some anyway, but I don't think I'm going to make enough for everybody because um, I don't think they're going to want them. So anyway, if you have any um, tips or links to anything, go to our Ravelry group and look at that. Uh, the title of the thread is like quick Christmas gifts or something and, and share. And then we, cause I know a lot of us like to make Christmas gifts. Um, so I'd appreciate any extra tips you may have. Um, another thing I worked on, um, I've mentioned before on this podcast that my friend Jenny owns the mama made it quilt shop in Longview, Washington. And, um, we were talking the other day, I had, work, had to work at the shop and we were talking and she was talking about, um, she has a lot of, um, hand dyed wool, felted wool in her shop and, and there's a, a need for felted wool, um, patterns. And so she says, gosh, I just wish I could design my own. And I said, really, it shouldn't be that hard because the shapes are pretty simple. And so she says, go for it. And I thought, okay, I think I will. <laughs> so... I'm going to try to design kind of a block of the month sort of thing for her shop. Um, I have to see how this goes. So this was my, this is for January. I'm going to try and hold this up. It's, it still needs to be put together. But this is my January and it's a little snowman. No, I can't get too close to my, my camera doesn't focus. Um, a little snowman swinging on a tree. And then I've got the name of the month applique. So this is all felted wool fabric. And um, I just uh, appliqued on and did some embroidery. And um, it was a lot of fun. So I did work on this over the weekend when I was at the quilt retreat with my friends. So between the lion and this, this is pretty much what, we, what I worked on. 
So this was really fun to work on. I hadn't done wool applique in quite a while. Um, I do enjoy it. I have a hard time doing applique with um, fabric because it makes my hands hurt. Um, but this, because you're taking bigger stitches, I guess, I don't know, the needle's a little bit bigger. It's just, it doesn't bother my hands as much. So, um, so yeah, so I've got a couple of ideas for the next couple of months. I need to sketch them out and then make them up. And, and I think Jenny's going to go ahead and write patterns for this and we'll have this and kits available in her shop. Um, so yeah, that was a lot of fun. My little snowman hanging on a tree, I put a little squirrel and a little red bird. So pretty cute. Um, so that's, that's all the sewing stuff that I have to share. So, um, what I'm going to go into now is the winner of the knitted knocker knit along that I had hosted for the month of October, the month of October here in the States at least. And I think maybe around the world, but I'm not positive. Um, October is breast cancer awareness month. And so I hosted a knit along to make knitted knockers. So to refresh, a knitted knocker is a knitted breast prosthetic to give to women who have had mastectomies. Um, they get stuffed and then the women are able to stick these in their bras to have a soft hand knitted breast prosthetic. And so uh, in the finished, uh, finished object thread, we had 23 entries. Um, so I did random number generator from two to 20, 24 entries. The first one was mine announcing the rules and everything. So two through 24, excuse me. Um, and the number was, uh, the winning number was number seven. And that is knitting Mary B and it's Mary from Wisconsin. So thank you, Mary, for knitting, um, some boobs <laughs> and, um, congratulations. You are the winner. And so get a hold of me either through Instagram or Ravelry. Uh, message me your address and I will send you. You get a skein from my shop, the Pinky Swear. And um, I will get this set, sent out to you as soon as I can. So congratulations. Thank you to everyone that participated. Um, I, I had mentioned last episode that I was, I didn't feel like I was a very good host of the knit along and I apologize for that, but I do appreciate the participation that we had. So, um, thank you to everyone and, uh, Mary, get a hold of me so I can send you your yarn. Now let's talk about some knitting. Um, I, like I had said earlier on, I have several finished objects and I am going to show them to you right now. So one is the bobble hat. I finished it, you guys. Um, this is a pattern by Donna Smith. It's the bobble hat. And um, I made some modifications in that I followed the pattern as it was written same amount of stitches and all that stuff, but I just went down two needle sizes. So where uh, the pattern called for the cuff to be knitted on sixes, I knitted it on fours. The crown of the hat is supposed to be knitted on eights and I knitted them with sixes. I only did a two inch brim instead of doing a longer one to be folded over. It is very stretchy. Jim tried it on and it fits him perfectly. So I know it'll fit my niece. Um, I think it's adorable. If I wore hats, I'd wear it, <laughs> but I don't wear hats. So um, I knitted this with Knitted Picks Brava Worsted Acrylic Yarn. It's very soft. Um, I think I think she'll like it. I hope she likes it. I like how it turned out. I liked working with the yarn. It was great. This will be a, a hat that will hold hold up to multiple washings and throwing it in the washer and dryer, whatever they choose to do. Um, I was pleased that it turned out still stretchy. I mean, like you can see the brim, the brim's real stretchy, but it goes back. And I think the key was that I used smaller needle sizes. So this was made with worsted weight yarn. Um, shortening the brim and using two sizes, using needles that were two sizes smaller than the pattern called for. So pretty cute. I like it. I hope she does too. I don't know. 
it's always a gamble when you make stuff for somebody, especially a teenager, because I don't know. Um, another thing that I finally finished was my sixes and threes cowl. 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 I was I had got, tried to get it finished for the graveyard cowl that was being hosted by uh, Katrina of the Yarn Thirty podcast, and I was a day late. I just didn't get it done, but I, it's okay because it made me finish it and I'm really happy with it. Um, the final step was doing um, Kitchenering, the provisional cast on that was right here. And the interesting thing is, as I laid it out and I had it all straight because I wasn't going to do a Mobius twist in it, but as you can see, see it still ended up with a twist. <laughs> so I had stuck the two pieces together like this and Kitchenered all the way around and I thought okay great I'm done and then when it was done it has a twist in it which ends up being okay because you know when you wear it like this it'll just give it a little bit extra of a twist but I'm really happy with it um, this was made with Knit Picks Capretta yarn which is their cash it's not straight cashmere but it's got I don't have the tag it's got cashmere in it it's very soft. It was nice to work with. Um, I don't know if I need to block it necessarily. I might because blocking always makes things seem like they have a better finished look to them. Um, but yeah, I, uh, I don't know what there is to say about it. These three colors, there's not very much yarn left of any of the colors. So this is, this is what I've got left. I mean, really not very much. Um, so one ball of each three colors did, did plenty. Um, I didn't measure it, so I don't know how long it is. But, you know, when you twist it and you go like that, it's, it's a really nice size to just fit right around my neck and still be kind of like right up close. So yeah, I'm happy with it. It's done. Um, I hope we have a cold enough winter that I can wear it. Our winters in the last few years have been a little warmer. I really, they keep saying we're going to have a hard winter and I don't know what that means. Does that mean a lot more rain? We've been pretty wet. We were almost record breaking for October. We had over eight inches of rain just in October. Um, I'm hoping when they say it's going to be a harder winter, that means snow. I want snow. But, um, so anyway, when it gets cold enough. I'm going to wear my, my new cowl. So that was, that felt really good. It does feel really good to get things finished. I feel like lately I've had so many projects that were in the works and nothing was getting finished that once I started to, you know, they were all kind of getting finished at the same time. So once I started getting things finished, it was like, oh, that feels really good. At one point I had, cause I'll sit downstairs and I'll knit in the evenings and I must've had six bags, six different project bags. And Jim would just laugh at me. And I said, well, you never know what you're going to feel like working on. Because I, um, if it's, if we're watching something on TV that I need to concentrate on, vanilla socks is the way to go. Um, if it's football and I'm not really watching and I may be just listening to a podcast or watching a podcast on my tablet, then I can knit something that, that I need to look at directions. So it just depends on what it is that I'm doing as whether or not I'm going to, um, be able to knit on one thing or another. And now I've just got two bags down there. So that feels really good. Um, another thing that I finished, I had just a hoe last time and I finished the other sock. So this is just vanilla socks. I followed Susan B. Anderson's recipe, um, smooth operator sock to do the afterthought heel. One thing, and I don't know what happened. I really don't. I don't know if you can see it here because because the sock blocker tends to pull things out. But one heel is not as <laughs> smaller than the other. It's really noticeable when I wear them. I don't know what happened. Obviously, I miscounted rows. I don't know. But you can see this one's a little bit bigger. And this one, it just doesn't cover as much. I swear, if I just, if I go away from my standard vanilla heel with the heel flap and gusset, I just don't seem to be able to do it right. Ugh. But anyway, they're fine. I wear them. Um, 
Even with the one with the bigger heel, I don't feel like it gives me enough room in my instep because I have a high arch and so this feels a little snug. Not too much that I can't wear them. I still have worn these. Um, these just came off of the drying rack, so they're clean, um, but they're done and I like them. And this was my yarn. This was a uh, first run of Hidden Beauty that, um, that I have ended up doing more saturated. So uh, there's a couple skeins, one skein I think left in the shop and um, it has more saturation on the color, but that's the colorway that that is. I used um, an acrylic yarn that I got at the craft store for the toes and the heels. Um, that's about all I can tell you. 64 stitches on size one needles, 2.25 millimeter. So that's that. Um, those are my three FOs. So um, I'm gonna share with you the couple of whips that I have going and, and then I have some acquisitions, which is kind of cool. Okay, um, this is my first work in progress. This is a hoe. This is um, my yarn. This is Ice Ice Baby. And thank you to everyone and anyone that purchased from my shop and purchased the kits. The kits were um, a skein of this with a, with a mini skein of the red and a matching project bag. You know, when I made them, I thought they were cute and I hoped, I thought, I just go into it thinking, well, I hope this does okay. And the response was pretty overwhelming and thank you, thank you, thank you for that. Um, I didn't expect that and I was very surprised and um, I appreciate it very, very much. Um, so anyway, this is my Ice Ice Baby sock. So I've got a hoe, uh, I was working on these last night and so I started the second sock. I just got past the heel. I am still turning the heel. I'm, I'm doing my decreases for the gusset. So they're coming along nicely. Um, I love the yarn. I love the color and all of that. And I hope that anybody that did purchase this uh, likes it as well. I know of one person, Sheila. I hope I see your picture. She's going to make a um, hitchhiker shawl with it. So there are a couple skeins. I think there's two skeins left of this yarn and I have it available that you can get it with or without the red mini because if you're not making a pair of socks with it, you don't need the mini. Um, so if you're interested in still getting this colorway, it's in my shop. Um, the other whip that I've been working on is I've been working on the Vente shawl and I've shown, let me get myself turned around here, shown the picture before the Vente. I really, really like working on this shawl. I don't know why. It's um, easy to follow. It's very well written. In each section, he's given the stitch count, which I really appreciate because sometimes you get knitting along and if they wait too long before, to, before they tell you how many stitches you're supposed to have, then if you messed up somewhere, you've got a long ways to go back. I don't check every row, but I check often. So um, I have worked quite a bit on it and I'm hoping I can show you because uh, it's all scrunched up on some needles here. Let me clear my space here. So I'm trying not to make too much noise. Oh my gosh, I'm so tangled up. What the heck? <laughs> Goodness gracious. Okay. So I know it's hard to tell. So what I've done since the last time, the last time I, I showed this, I have a progress keeper, was right here. The, so that doesn't look like much, but what you do is you build up on one side. So all of that is new. And so what I'm liking, besides the fact that it's simple, um, easy to follow, is that you're building up, but you're building up on one side. So when you're going back and forth, you're not doing all 300 and whatever stitches. You're only doing up to about half. And then I've got this side going now. So I'm working on this solid and this is a lace, the lace part that's all in gray. And I'm sorry, I can't 
really open it up for you because I don't want it to fall off the needles. But anyway, I love this. I've already thought of other colorways that I can make this in and I haven't even finished it yet. Um, I did get my, uh, what is it, Knitter's Pride marbles. I had ordered just a pair of tips um, because I already have Knitter's Pride is the needles that I use. Um, that's the interchangeables that I have so I knew it would fit on the cables and stuff. And I wanted to give it a try because I didn't want to buy a whole set and then go, oh, this just really isn't for me. So I bought a pair of sixes because I need sixes all the time. It seems like most fingering weight shawls are made with sixes. Um, I like, it's got a nice tip, so fair, fairly pointy. Um, what else can I say? I've heard people say they're, they've got a little bit more grip, which I liked because when, especially working on a shawl, sorry, I just want to make sure I don't lose my stitches. Um, because you're working with fingering weight yarn and I'm really a, a big needle for that way to yarn, um, your stitches are bigger and things slide off. So I had them on metal needles, which was working out fine, but, um, it's slippery. So I thought, okay, let me try, let me try these. And I do like them. It took a little bit of adjusting because I went right from slippery needles to, uh, these plastic needles. Um, there is a little bit of a flexibility to them, which I don't know if that helps with fatigue or not, because I don't find working on sixes with fingering weight yarn um, fatiguing necessarily. Um, I'm curious because I, I've put aside the star shower shawl because um, that was fatiguing my hands because you have to go in, forget exactly what the stitch is, but you have to kind of go in several stitches. And I'm wondering if this might be easier for, for working on that. So the other thing that's weird is because it's not a solid color, it's um, kind of psychedelic. When, the, <laughs> when that's slipping through and you're doing your stitches, um, it's like a lot of color changing. And at first I was working on the red and so the pink and orange didn't really match with the red and it was a little clashing and I thought, Okay, that's kind of weird. It just took some adjusting to it, but now I'm enjoying them. Um, I'm not sure that I'll get a whole set of them, but I may get more, I may get more sixes just because that seems to be, like I said, my memory card just got full and I realized that I didn't delete last episode off the memory card. So sorry about that. I'm hoping I can catch up where I left off. Um, I think I was pretty much done talking about my Vente shawl. Um, I like the pattern. I like the way it's written. I love my yarn. This is um, some of my yarn. This red and this is uh, Blue Moon Fiber Arts uh, is the gray in the sock set rock. So um, it's, it's looking pretty cool. Let me see. I'm going to pull that up. Oh, and I think I was talking about the needles which now I don't remember what I was going to say. Isn't that cool? Look at that. That's looking pretty neat. So super happy with it. I love working on it. Um, I had like I mentioned I, I've already thought of different colorways that I want to do it in. Um, yeah we'll see. We'll see what happens. Um, speaking of shawls, this shawl this is my random active color. I've shown this before a few episodes ago. Um, uh, and, and I'll put this and any links and any information about stuff I talk about in the description box below this YouTube channel on YouTube. Um, I've noticed a few podcasters are putting timestamps and I think I might try and do that so that if you're not interested in the sewing part and you just want the knitting, you can skip to that. If you want to just see a shop update or whatever, I think I might try and do that. No promises, <laughs> but I think I'm going to try. Um, so those are my works in progress. Um, what I'm going to show now is um, some new things I've acquired. Um, by acquiring, meaning I purchased. I had seen on, I think it's the Die Another Day podcast, um, Christina was talking about the Gleaner. And the Gleaner is this tool. 
and it has a um, has a different attachments that fit here for depending on the type of fabric that you're working with and it um, takes pills off of your sweaters or knitwear so you just you know scrape it on the on the sweater I had shown a picture of what I did on Instagram with a sweater that I purchased at a thrift store and it's a cashmere sweater um, I figured I, you know, I didn't have anything to lose. It's lavender, so of course I'm going to buy it. It's super comfortable, but it was really pilly, especially like here where you where you rub a lot. And I've picked them off and I've tried to do all that. I am I've even in the past had those little electric razor things, but that never seemed to quite get it cuz if the pill was too big to go in the little holes, it's not going to do any good. So, I thought, okay, let me try this. This side is more just like a lint brush thing, so I think the idea is you you um, scrape your pills off and then you lint brush it to get whatever off. This thing worked like a charm. Um, I showed a before and after picture on Instagram and I, I was pretty excited. Um, I tried doing it on a t-shirt and I didn't have as much luck. For one, the pills were really tiny and the t-shirt was so stretchy that, and I changed the end to go with a finer fabric, whatever the little end piece is because that... That just comes off. Um, so I didn't have as much luck with a t-shirt, but I certainly did with a sweater. It beats those little electric things. Uh, I got this on Amazon. It was the same price as it was on the Gleaners website, but I have Amazon Prime, so I didn't have to pay for shipping, and I got it in a couple of days. So, um, yeah, so you get that. You get a few attachments depending on the fabric and little carrying case. So that was a really fun uh, purchase because it's a tool. It's a gadget. I love gadgets. <laughs> and um, so that was really fun. Uh, another purchase I was able to get in and up in, Des up in Yarns Designs. Oh, she has gorgeous yarn and I've been wanting to get some. And so um, with the sale of my kits, I had some money to spend and I bought, this is Coming Out Rainbows in her fingering base I don't know if she it's a sparkle base so I don't know if there's a name for it <clears throat> so it's a 75 merino 20 nylon 5 stellina fingering weight 438 yards and it's so gorgeous it's just got it's just got such a lovely blend of rainbow colors that just make me happy I had seen a pattern on Ravelry, um, in fact, I'm gonna look really quick while I'm right here, um, that uses a, um, it shows it with a solid, I mean, I'm sorry, I should have done this before. It shows it with a solid and then you use a really fun variegated to have as an accent. And um, it is called Loop. And I will put, I'll put the link. Maybe I'll even insert a picture. So I thought, oh, that was just really cool. It's, it's a bigger, um, bigger shawl. And I really like my campsite shawl. And I use it all the time. I keep it downstairs. So if when we're sitting there watching TV or whatever, I get a little cool, I just throw it on me. And I thought I could use another one of those. So I have this skein of, this is an MCN yarn that um, Jeanette dyed for me when I did a swap with her and I've been trying to find the right project to go with it and I think that is what it needs. So the body of the of the shawl will be this beautiful purple tonal. It's got some pink in it and then you have these little loops and pops of of rainbow and I think it will be super cool. So um, I'm going to finish my Vente shawl first, um, and then I'll be working on my star shower. But I figure I could have my star shower and this going at the same time. Because I just, I really think this could be fun. I really do. Um, because this being so bright, I love it. But it, to wear it as a shawl or something by itself, I think it might look too clowny. But I think put in with something that's a little darker and a little more um, serious kind of helps tone it down, but that's yeah, still kind of fun. So up in yarn designs, check her out. Um, she's got gorgeous yarns. Another one that I was so lucky to, oops, 
feel like I was so lucky to um, have gotten in on, and I don't know how it happened. I don't know how it happened. It just happened. But I got some mustache yarn. Um, her yarns are hard to get because they sell out. And I follow her on Instagram, and, and I think she had posted an update or something, and so I immediately went to her website, which is just mustacheyarn.com, I believe. I'll put the link. mustacheshop.com. So anyway, this is perfect self-striping socks. So these are two 50 gram hanks that the stripes will match perfectly. They're all, they're um, wound or put on the hank or whatever so that they're the same. And this has 11 uneven stripes, but it's in this, it's kind of rainbowy, but it's toned down. And so I feel like this will make a really fun pair of socks. And um, let me show you the pattern I wanna make with it. So this self-striping yarn, I'm gonna make Mystic Spiral Socks. You can see them here. Um, my friend Michelle from the Naughty Knitwits podcast, she made some of these and they were really cool because you end up doing, see I can't get too close. You end up doing some short rows so it, tw it makes the stripes go like at an angle and just gives a different interest. Um, this is by Josh Rikes or Ricks, R-Y-K-S. Um, so I, it, it, this is a pattern that you'd pretty much have to do with self-striping. So I thought that would look cool because this is, yeah. Hopefully, hopefully it doesn't have to be um, even stripes because these aren't even. But I th think it'll just be cool. So I generally... I have done some pattern socks, but I generally find that I like to do um, vanilla socks because that's my my chill out, mindless kind of knitting where I don't have to look at a pattern. I can just sit there and get in a rhythm. Um, but I think it'll be kind of cool to have um, some challenging socks. So I'm gonna wait till I get my Ice Ice Baby socks done so that I don't have any socks on the needles because I believe, I guess you don't have to do them two at a time. I haven't ever done two at a time other than when I, I knitted off of a double sock blank and I did two at a time on the same needle, which I didn't care for because um, when, let me pull this out here. When I was, sorry, when I was knitting and then you have another pair of socks hanging here I just found it um, cumbersome. I, I didn't like having that flopping around. So I prefer to do them on one needle. Um, so I think I'm gonna try, and I don't know if these are toe up. I haven't even really looked at the pattern. Um, so if it's toe up, which I, I know Michelle did hers toe up, but she always does her socks toe up. I may have to have her show me how to start that and try toe up. So we'll see. So stay tuned for that. That's an up and, up and coming. Um, and so uh, if that's it for now, I don't have any shop update. I haven't been able to work on anything the last couple weeks uh, just due to the way my schedule's been. I've got uh, some new fabric coming. I have some fabric to make project bags with. I have some ideas for some new uh, yarn colorways that I'm excited to try. So I may even get some dyeing done this afternoon while this is uploading. We'll see. I need to keep my brain occupied and off of the TV and off of the computer and just uh, surround myself with color and texture and all things that make me happy. <laughs> so that's it for now. Thank you so much for joining me. Um, check back in a couple of weeks. Subscribe so you know when I ha have a new episode coming up. Um, and um, for now, take care of each other, love each other, and I will see you next time. <music>